So spirals are absolutely fascinating things and you find them all over the place. I mean, a Tesla's coil is a spiral, of course a snail shell is a spiral. They're different forms of spiral, but they're spirals nonetheless. They have, of course, been turned into gears, and you find spiral gears in things like car jacks, table lifts, that sort of thing. So they are interesting to look at. They are interesting as a gear application, and the issue with them is drawing them. I could, of course, just get a drawing package that has that ability to draw a spiral, but to my mind, that's cheating a little bit. I often think that you should try to use a tool to its fullest extent. And so what we're going to do is draw a spiral gear in Tinkercad. Now, trying to do something like that means you have to think a little bit more deeply about it. So Tinkercad, for instance, deals with things as a Cartesian coordinate. That is a distance x, a distance y, a distance z. And if I want to get to a point, I take so many steps in the x, so many in the y, so many in the z, and I'm at a point in space. And that's the basic of the system of Tinkercad. But there is another one. There's one called polar coordinates. Polar coordinates are a distance along an axis and then an angle that you turn through. Something like an Archimedes spiral is defined by the distance of the arms of rotation in the spiral are all the same. So it would be much easier if we could do this in polar coordinates rather than Cartesian coordinates. And we can trick a simple program like Tinkercad into working in polar coordinates because in Cartesian coordinates, if you wanted to design a parametric spiral, well, the equation's actually pretty tough. In polar coordinates, it's really straightforward. R is the radius of rotation, B is some constant value, which is the distance between the arms, and theta is the angle of rotation. It's really a straightforward thing to look at so that we could implement it. Now, if you want something continuous, you can't use a computer to do it. Because a computer uses little steps. It takes a little step in the X, a little step in the Y. Anything that looks like a circle in a computer is just an approximation to a circle. If you increase the number of sides, it looks more like a circle. Now, when it comes to printing something out or using something, that approximation can be very, very good, particularly if you make thousands of steps. In fact, that's the idea behind differentiation. Differentiation is all about taking little discrete steps, and that's what a computer is about. So we need to make steps that are tiny enough so that when we print them, we don't notice them. And we need to trick Tinkercad into thinking it's using polar coordinates when it is, in fact, using Cartesian coordinates. And this is how we do it. We are, of course, in code blocks. If you've not looked at code blocks before, you should have a look at it because it's a really great way of extending what you can do with Tinkercad in a relatively easy way. And the first thing we need to do is create a new object. And I've called this object Tooth. Now, anything I put under that create new object is going to be able to be repeatable by calling on Tooth. And it just saves you an awful lot of time of rewriting and rewriting code. So in our new object, what we want is a tooth. Now, there is a limitation in Tinkercad in that you can only pull down the shapes that are available on the left-hand side. You can't use a definer shape like a shape of a tooth. I've heard that's coming. When it does, it's going to be really useful. But what we're going to do is create a box. And in the box, we've made it a tiny tooth shape and we've changed edge to one so that we can get a rounded edge on it. And as an approximation, that's going to be fine for what we want to do. Now we want to create the main object, which is going to be the thing that actually draws the spiral. And in that spiral, we want to repeat a whole load of times. Now I'm repeating it 180 times because Tinkercad will only allow you to do 300 objects and 180 little steps at the size. So what we're going to do is going to approximate a smooth curve good enough for printing. In there, what I want to do is set where I'm going to rotate around. Now I'm going to rotate it around the z-axis so it'll move on the plane of x and y. The angle is the angle of rotation because remember we're trying to fool this into thinking that it's actually using polar coordinates. And it's going to take the origin 0, 0, 0 as the point at which it rotates. So anything that I put there, if it's away from the origin, is going to rotate around the origin, which is exactly what we want. 
Now, whenever I've tilted it around the origin, what I want to do, obviously, is move it. And I want to move it by a radius that changes, so that when I copy this and move it, it will move the little block that I've done, the tooth, a certain number of steps and a certain number of degrees, putting it in the position I want to put it in. Angle, obviously, I want to change. Now, I want this to go a full circle. So I'm going to change angle by two degrees every time it goes through this loop. So it's going to eventually go 360 degrees all the way around. Equally, I want to change the radius because I want it to step out from there. And I want it to step out by 0 0.04 because you remember that little value that we call B. If I do 0 0.04 180 times, it's about 7 millimetres. So it'll step out seven millimeters as it draws that spiral for me. Now what I want to do is call on tooth. That object tooth will be placed on there, moved by the angle and the radius to be the position that I want it to be in. When I've done that, I want to add a little circle at the bottom because the spiral that I draw will not be circular and I want to find a centre in order to use it as a gear. Finally, Tinkercad puts everything midpoint between the plane and I want that circle to be at the bottom of the spiral so I need to move it. Once I've done all of that, we're actually ready to go. We can run the step and watch see how this draws that spiral for us. Now it's done that, we can export it as an STL and then we can re-import it into the normal Tinkercad space as an Archimedean spiral. So there's my re-imported spiral and I've quickly drawn a frame and a spur gear. Now let's print those out and see what happens. Now the assembly is pretty straightforward. Glue the upright into the notch, slide on the spiral gear and then slide on the spur gear. If I try to turn that spur gear it's locked, it won't move. If I turn the spiral gear, of course, it moves the spur gear. And it moves it really quite slowly. This is, in effect, one tooth in a spiral. This has got 18 teeth, so it's an 18 to 1 ratio, which means you get a huge decrease in speed. But equally, you get a huge increase in torque. And it's self-locking, because that won't move once that's in position which is why it's used for things like car jacks and table lifts. So there we go. How to do a spiral gear in Tinkercad with code blocks. Now I think the gear is pretty fascinating and I'm going to have to have a think about what else we can do with it. But I hope the video was helpful. I hope you enjoyed it and thank you very much for watching.